Hello all welcome back. In the last tutorial we have simulated our IP core and made sure it's working properly. So this tutorial we are going to build the system which is going to use this IP core. So the most of the system development it is similar to the DMA system that we developed before. So most of the things will look uh, familiar. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just repackaging my IP so that uh, the test bench is also made part of my IP package. So I'm just repackaging it and uh, I'm opening a new project for building my block design. So let's call it image processing system. So I will also move my current project, this one, to my IP core folder because I am keeping all my IPs in this folder and our competent.xml is actually sitting here. So let's move that also to the same folder, our last project. Okay, so here first thing I am going to do is configure the IP repository. So go here and IP repo. Okay. Then create block design. Let's add the processing processing system. Work automation. And let's add our IP also. Image process. Okay, our IP is here. Now remember the architecture, we are going to interface our IP to the processor through the DMA controller. So let's go ahead and add the direct memory access, AXI DMA. We need to customize it, same as last time, no scatter gather. And keep this width as the maximum both read and write channel and allow unaligned transfer. So if you don't remember what these things are, please go back and refer to the tutorial on DMA. Let's also increase this width. Okay, now here there is an important thing. Memory map data width, that's fine. Stream data width, okay? So this is the width of the interface which will be interfaced with our IP. Now remember our IP has 8-bit interface okay uh, the master as well as the slave interfaces they are 8-width so this interface this is the interface uh, which is reading from the memory and writing to our IP that I can change to 8 but this interface I don't know why silings they always keep it 32 there is no way you can change it it is fixed at 32 okay so we'll see how to solve it okay so we add it our DMA controller, connection automation, so that the XC light of the DMA controller gets connected to the GP port of the processor. Okay, so that is done. Now, MM2S and S2MM, we will connect them. So, as I mentioned before, the XC stream here, we need to connect to master axis memory map to stream. This data width is 8. This is also 8, so no problem. You can drag and drop. Now, this data width, our master interface is 8 bits wide, but this interface is 32 bit. Okay, so it will let you drag and drop and connect it, but the problem is only the lower uh, 7, 8 bits will be connected and the upper bits will always remo remain 
zero. So when you are sending some data from here, he will be actually sending uh, four pixels at a time because as far as he's concerned, his interface is uh, 32 bits. So he will be sending four pixels to the memory. Only one of them will be the real valid pixel. Remaining will be all zero because of this width mismatch. So what you need to do is we need to uh, uh, concatenate four consecutive pixels coming out of this master interface, convert it into 32 bit, then connect it here. Okay, so that's what you have to do. But fortunately, Silings they have an IP code to do that. There is a Axie for stream data width converter. So we need to take that IP and let's bring it here. And here, let's see. Okay, master interface T data width. That is, we have 32. So again, this is in terms of bytes. So it is four bytes. Slave interface, keep it in auto, he'll automatically detect it. Okay, so now if you see this side of this IP is eight, this side of this IP is 32. So as I mentioned before, what the IP does is he takes four data from here uh, using four different clock cycles, concatenate it into one 32-bit data and uh, give it to the master interface. So this way we can handle this problem. So connect this here, connect this here. Okay, the connection automation. Okay, so the clocks we can connect. Okay. So the both clocks got connected. Reset, we can connect here. A reset in. Okay. Okay. Now very few things are remaining. One is we need to connect this DMA controller uh, to the DDR. So last time what we did was we enabled one of the HP ports of the PS and we connected these interfaces through the HP port. Uh, now also you can do it, but let's learn something extra. So if you go to PS, in addition to our GP and HP port, there is one more port called AXI ACP port, which stands for Accelerator Coherency Port. Now remember what was meant by coherency. So if when you have a processor and a memory and in between a cache memory, the data that is processor is sending, it will not immediately go to memory, but it will be initially cached and later it will be going to the memory. Same way uh, when you read from the memory processor initially checks whether data is in the cache. If that is in the cache, it will be taken from the cache. It won't be checking the main memory. Now, remember when we did uh, some of our previous tutorial, we had this issue. Right, uh, the data I'm writing to the memory is not the one going through DMA. Yeah, when we did the DMA tutorial, that issue was there. So that's where we use the decache flash instruction to flash the cache. Now, if you use this port, ACP port, it will guarantee cache coherency. Okay, so if any IP reads or write through this interface, uh, it will make sure the cache is updated along with the memory. Same way, if the IP is reading from the memory, uh, it will make sure the memory is updated with the current copy in the cache. So let's enable it. By default, it is disabled. We can enable it. ACP port. You can use HP port also. Okay, same way we did last time. There is uh, nothing extra. So connection automation. Okay, ACP clock. This clock we can just connect to the. Uh, all other clocks and uh, yeah s to mm we can connect to the acp so you can see this or this one this mm to s and s to mm they got connected to a smart interconnect and this time it got connected to the ACP instead of the HP port. Okay, so that's something extra. Now the last step, the interrupt. 
okay so last time dma uh, for dma also we used polling method we didn't use the interrupt mechanism for the dma controller but if you see the dma controller you can see it has two interrupt output one is mm to s interrupt which will be asserted when memory map to stream data transfer is over similarly s to mm which will be asserted when device to memory data transfer is over now in our case uh, i'm not really interested in mm to s interrupt because this is basically telling he has finished data transfer to the ip but that is not giving any extra information to me i can transfer a new data only when the ip says he is ready to accept data okay so i am only interested in this uh, intro from the ip for transmitting from memory to the ip but s to mm i will be interested because that is basically telling he has finished transmission from my ip to the memory so when that intro gets asserted uh, i can make sure the data processing is over okay so i am interested in two interrupts s to mm interrupt from dma as well as the interrupt from the ip so first we need to enable the interrupt same as last time so we have to go here go to interrupt and fabric interrupt and irqf to p if you remember last time i mentioned if you have a single interrupt you can just drag and drop but now you have two so this doesn't work okay because this is a bus here and you have two independent wires here so you need to concatenate these two interrupt interrupt lines and connect it here as a bus for that you have to use the concat ip so take concat ip this one entirely there is no logic here inside this ip he just uh, converts wires into a bus that's it so his number of ports input one and output will be a bus of two wires okay that's enough so we can take this interrupt connect here we can take this interrupt connect here and now this two bit bus we can connect here okay so that's it save it check address editor that everything is address mapped okay processor can control dma and dma can control uh, ddr okay through the acp port it can also access the external qspi okay so there is an spi chip uh, flash chip also on the board if you wish you can access that chip also through this acp port but uh, we are not interested in that okay so everything looks fine uh, finally let's verify our design these warnings are fine there's no t last okay that's also an optional signal so that's also fine Now, if you wish for debugging, we can add the debug code and see whether things are working properly or not. So let's add the debug. So let's see how signals are coming to our IP. So add that to debug, how it is going out of our IP. We can check whether interrupt signal is coming from our IP. Okay, so I guess uh, these many signals are enough. So run connection automation and he inserts the ILA core. After this, you can just create the wrapper, generate output product, export to SDK, and finally generate the bit stream. Okay, so now I will actually generate Bitstream and I will export to SDK and uh, how to develop the software for this, we will see in the next tutorial. Thank you.